First, your name. Darius. Sorry? Darius. Darius. The question that arises is, why do certain fears not latch me? So, I don't worry about money, I don't worry about viruses, I don't worry about my health. And then certain other fears, say, getting into an argument with my parents, so in relationships, hook me much more. The, the last two or three suggestions you gave are very emotional um, issues mm -hmm. and the, the earlier ones are more conceptual. You, you, you don't get emotional about a coronavirus, you know what I mean? So, when it is something which is conceptual, you can handle it easier because the conceptual is something your, your base station, you're more familiar with. But the moment it starts to go into the emotional, although you are in an evolutionary sense familiar with the emotional because you know, you're not just a human being, you're also an animal and also a plant. So there's parts of your system that are already tuned in with the emotional, but it is still not your base station. So you're already in deep waters or deeper waters than the conceptual would be literally actually because it's lower down. So that is already something which the conceptual is very itchy, scratchy about because it's not so familiar with what's going on there. That would be one way of looking at it and saying that's right, the reason why you have that, you know, that sort of a itchy scratchiness when it comes to the, what would be more the emotional areas and where fears emerge because they are more actually being perceived from the emotional. And there are people who, for example, have, in a sense, expanded beyond that and are able to perceive the family-related emotional matters from the conceptual. And so they are less impacted because they are able to rationally look at what otherwise would be an emotional uh, turmoil-causing impulse coming from from a situation. So that's the reason it's you can by, by moving into a state of surrender or growing into surrender to the soul, you would expand in such a way that those issues that cause the fears would actually no more cause those fears because you're able to perceive them from a different vantage point. For example, what if you suddenly just look at your parents your mother, for example. If you suddenly in a moment move into a state where you can have a unity consciousness experience with her, how is it going to arise fears in you after that? It can't. Because you've expanded your consciousness and you're able to connect with her in such a different way that even if you move back into the conceptual, you would still not be shaken to that extent. So it's about surrender. The more surrendered you are, the less you'll be a victim of those emotions and more the master. It's a choice you have. A choice to surrender to what? I guess that's when... So I would love to make that transition. I think what you said is spot on, that my base is conceptual and the emotional stuff feels more out of order. What's the practice to stabilize in that? It's the practice of surrender to the soul, which means the, the decision to live your life differently from now on. How differently? To be able to bring yourself to this moment and in this moment to to see from where the impulse to action is arising. Is it an impulse from the soul, from the truth, from the antar atman, from the antar guru, the individualized cosmic soul? Or is it a sort of a push from the ahankar, from the ego? 
And if it is a push from the ego, you don't undertake that action. And if it is an impulse from the soul, you go with it. That's the practice of sadhana that is undertaken here. This is, this is a satsang, it's a place where spiritual practices are discussed and truth is, is yearned for and also found. So, if you are willing to take up a practice that brings you closer to the truth of your existence and into Self-realization processes, then you would have to think about your readiness to take up a practice that actually expands your consciousness and makes you able to be master of the emotions and experience them at will rather than being a victim of them and being buffeted around by them. And the practice is discernment, surrender, action. When you say discernment, I heard you say the soul is binary. So does that mean it's just a kind of a go, no go? Not much of a story or a future scenario? Yes. Yes, no, no, yes, no, yes, no, 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 yes, yes, no, yes. It's a continuous impulse which is binary in nature. And it is in this moment that that action which is to emerge, emerges and not anything which is future bound. Anything which is along a time trajectory, no, it is this moment. And you can start to nitpick and say, well, if I ask, then the very moment I ask is a moment later than the answer I receive and so on and so forth. First practice it and then we'll talk. It's the ego actually trying to destruct the connect the possibility even to tune into the Master, because that means the destruction of the ego. I guess what's coming up for me is being unsure of what is the soul and what is ego. How do I know I can trust what's arising? How do you know it now? Based on what do you act now? Your actions are based on a, a, on a system of uh, morals, codes of conduct, ethics, um, principles of humanism maybe, and so on. Your conscience, for example, which is another aspect of ego actually. That's what determines your actions. What else does? So you don't have anything to lose, do you? By starting a practice and trying to see if you can actually discern between the truth and the, and the ego. You have nothing to lose because even the very fact that you even ask that question already readies you more than not ever having asked it before. Asking this question. Is this the right thing for me to do in this moment? For example, How do I know that the answer is truth and not ego? There are certain ways by which one can discern this. I mean, for example, one way is that the impulse of the truth is, is very... it's not trying to convince anything. It's not trying to push its way through. It's almost imperceptible in a sense. It's very subtle and it's very material. Whereas the, the ego is quite loud and it's, it's very conceptual and it's very pushy. This is a way by which you can determine it, but also to say that as these processes go on, the ego becomes so subtle that you have to really be vigilant. It's a sadhana, you know. You see sadhus, they stand on one leg for like 30 years just so that they can get some knowledge about existence. And then they, the guru comes by and says, ah, oh, you've stood on your leg for 30 years, now stand on the other leg. Then I'll tell you, maybe. And they stand on the other leg and they're waiting for jnana truth, knowledge. 
it's a practice, it's a sadhana. You know, it's not like a, a sort of a wellness um, list of take-offs or something. It's a very tough and challenging sadhana practice and it's very fascinating because when you start taking it up, you start moving into it and it, it, it actually reveals itself to you. Because you have a guru within it, Santar Guru. You can't run away from it. Once you know it's there, now try running away and see. So it's a bending down, surrender, feeling. Suddenly it reveals itself, you know. There are people sitting here who have actually materially had that experience. And they didn't have it in the beginning. But through the practice, through the asking, discerning, trying to discern, one day you feel it and you're like, can this be it? Maybe it's not. Doubt of course will set in immediately because the ego doesn't want that process to actually happen, it doesn't. And so through the processes of doubt and you go deeper into surrender, then you sometimes feel it, sometimes you're sure of it, sometimes you're entirely unsure for a six-month period maybe. But the sadhana, the practice is... And, and I, I think more than anything else, the most empowering thing of this practice is that the soul is there, you've known it as a child, so you, it can't elude you lifelong, it simply can't. The cosmos can elude you, enlightenment can elude you, but self-realization can't elude you because you've already known it. If you observe a little baby, you'll know that, they, that the impulse is not from ego. So it's that same thing, so you will find it. It may take a while here and there. What do you mean when you say it's got a material quality? It's an atom. Atom, atma. So is it something I can feel like my heart beat? It's more felt as a sort of a very, very subtle impulse, almost like a movement. Like sometimes, I think it was yesterday, one of my students was telling me that she experiences it as a forward motion for a yes and a backward motion for a no. And there are some who experience it, I think you were saying that your experience is that it's more like a closing in when it's a no and an opening out when it's a yes. There are a lot, different people have different ways to... to the, the most important thing about this is to remember the surrender that when you are in that surrender, the Master will show the way. Like, it's not a conceptual construct over here, it's a material experience. It may take a bit of time and those who persevere will indeed reach Self-Realization, which is nothing more or less than starting to feel the Self, the Soul, Soul-Realization. And then deepening in surrender to that master. It's about the surrender. It's not about I know the master more. It's about I am in surrender to you. O oh, master of my being. In surrender to you. Surrender, surrender, surrender. And then this, this entire thing just becomes more and more an instrument of that truth. And it's not a fancy idea, it's a real experience, very material, very almost normal and present. This becomes an instrument. Every moment being perfected more and more through the processes of surrender. And when that process starts in you, you just will not want to live life any other way. Because life becomes vibrant and... and full of fun actually. It's just vibrant. It's just here and now and there's, there's joy underlying even those moments of... suffering or pain or... 
And as that joy grows, the ego's impact recedes. And as the ego's impact recedes, the joy grows.